Welcome back to Dr. Read the Puddle. My name is David Reich. I'm a welding instructor, CWI, CWE, here at my local community college. For all of you that hit that subscribe button, I want to say thank you. I sincerely appreciate it. For today's lesson, we're going to recognize Omer Blodgett. Who is Omer, Omer Blodgett, you ask? Omer was a senior design consultant for Lincoln Electric for over 60 years, as well as a mechanical engineer. Omer wrote many books on structural engineering and the proper design of weldments that are still used today. Sadly, Omer passed away back in 2017 at the age of 99. His contributions to the welding industry will live on forever, and his future contributions will be sorely missed. He was a very wise man. So today we're going to talk about gussets. You think to yourself, what do gussets have to do with anything? Well, for many years, I've repaired things that have broken. Gussets that were improperly placed, put in the wrong location where they've cracked the material, cracked the base metal, uh, so on and so forth. So back in 2005, Welding Design and Fabrication wrote an article, actually it was Omer who wrote the article, on the proper placement of gussets. So for today, we're going to actually put that to the test. So as you can see, I have two structures here, and I put the gussets in two different locations. So for the lesson today, we're going to have old Bender here try to break them, and we're going to see where those gussets fail, or if they don't fail. So this is a lesson that will hopefully send you out into the world designing and building things and putting those gussets in the proper place. So we will move the camera, zoom in on Bender here, and let's break some stuff. Okay, you can see the article I've referenced. There's Omer up in the top left-hand corner. And there is the, the article written on gussets in the proper placement. If you look at the one on the lower left where that crack started, that's the improper placement per Omer's instructions. And the one on the right side where the gussets placed on the outside of the tubing is the proper location. So as you can see, I've mocked up two different structures here. The one on the left side, you can see that I've left the joint unwelded on the top. I just welded one side of each gusset. On the bottom to that 5 8 plate, I did weld the tubing all the way around, and I welded one side of each gusset. So this is the improper way of putting a gusset on tubing. So if we come over to this next one here, you can see I did the same exact thing on the same exact tubing. So I left the top joint completely unwelded, and then I just welded up the gusset on both sides. Same with the bottom on this 5 8 plate. I did weld the tubing all the way to the plate and one side, uh, welded one side of each gusset. So we will start with this one first, and let's put it under that press, and let's just see what happens. This is the best part of the job sometimes. All right, it's time to put Bender to work. As you can see, I have this 50-ton ram placed right at the end of the tubing to put the most stress on those gussets. So what we're going to do now is activate the pump and start seeing, uh, seeing where those stresses are placed on that tubing and where this part will fail. So you can see the gussets did hold up pretty good. We, have, uh, we do have some failure here. You can see that it is starting to collapse the inside of that tubing. You can see it forming in there. If we look down inside there, it's sort of starting to tear that, uh, tear that weld right in the corner. The other side too, it's starting to let loose right in that corner. So uh, we can keep going with this, but I think I know what's going to happen by the look of that weld right at the end of my thumb. It's going to tear right there on the edge, and I have a feeling that's, uh, that's not going to end up well. So we will try the other one to see what happens. All right, now we have the other structure. Same situation. We have the ram placed way out at the end to put the most stress on the joint. These gussets are welded on the outside of the tubing per Omer's instructions in that article we mentioned. So let's see what happens.
very interesting. You can see that gusset held on for dear life. Now we were pushing down till that ram stopped and you can see it wanted to sort of separate there. The other side it did tear right at that weld. So uh, it, did not, uh, it did not crush the tubing on the inside though. That is the interesting part. You notice on the inside there's no, almost no damage to this tubing. So that gusset held up, uh, held up very well. If we were to keep, you know, keep pushing down on it, it probably would have torn that gusset. But as far as the overall structure integrity, I would have to say that the second one, uh, the second one did hold up better because there's no, there's no denting on the inside of that tubing. So uh, very, very interesting to see the difference here. So as you can see, a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, they, both, they both actually did pretty well. My guess on this tubing though, if we would, would have kept pushing, uh, those welds would have torn and ripped the center of this out and you can see how dented and deformed uh, that, that material is. If we look at the other one, while the weld did tear in this corner, uh, it still did not deform the tubing. The gussets actually did most of the work and held that, held that piece in place. So. Something to think about when you're building things and uh, designing gussets to give something strength. This is, a, this is one of those lessons that, you know, I kind of predicted an epic failure in, the, in this one where they were mounted on the inside, but it just goes to show the strength of your welds that if you do something with a good weld on it, it will hold up pretty well. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It's always fun to try to break stuff. And if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and I'll gladly make more.